Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here. It is a Friday out here. Goodness, we made it through the work week, or in this case, for me out here, the chase week. Still got a lot of storm uh, activity kicking up here this weekend. We'll keep an eye on here in the Oklahoma, Kansas area. Latest earthquake activity here on this beautiful Friday shows a five-pointer coming into the area of the Indonesia Islands region, uh, right along the southern end here of the Java Trench. Nothing big. Uh, in this area for now. Uh, in fact, if you look at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity, uh, things have mellowed out quite nicely here across the western areas of the Pacific Plate. Uh, we did see a 4.3 coming into the New Zealand area. This is a region I've been kind of watching here recently. 4.3 coming in uh, just earlier. Looks like that earthquake is uh, somewhat deep, about 88 kilometers deep here in between North and South Island coming in uh, about one o'clock, uh, one or about one thirty in the morning here, local time uh, for me anyway. Uh, let's see what else we got out here. Kilauea volcano, uh, still seeing some earthquake activity here across the summit region. Really, no major changes going on there for now, uh, but we'll continue to keep an eye on that because that's um, definitely been getting active here in terms of the magma. Uh, accumulation at the summit and also uh, just in general it uh, moving around down there subsurface areas uh, four pointer out in the Gulf of California this earthquake coming in early this morning it looks like 4.3 we'll watch for some further movement looks like we're already seeing some up here across the uh, Southern California area it's gonna be the Brawley seismic zone here and looks like the portion of the Imperial Fault as well 2.7 the latest earthquake in this area just south here of the border off the plate boundary. Uh, the San Andreas Fault here continues to sleep for now. That is, um, that's good. We need to keep it to sleep, but uh, eventually it will wake up and uh, make itself known. Uh, most of this earthquake activity here in Northern Cal is from yesterday. 1.7 here today, south of the Lake Almanor area in Northern California. Aside from that, mostly smaller microquake activity out here across the Pacific Northwest today. Uh, there in Yellowstone National Park, it looks like they added a few more earthquakes. Uh, although, you know, let's go check out the Yellowstone seismographs here. This is the most recent one, and there's all the activity from yesterday. Some overnight as well. These are all generally small, very small earthquakes, and uh, the majority of them are probably a 0.1, 0.3 maybe a 0.5 but either way they're definitely earthquakes and they should be noted up here on the map right if there's a swarm going on sometimes I'll put a 0.1 a 0.5 but uh, I can guarantee you there's a lot more than 11 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours I'm not going to go through and count these but uh, you're welcome to if you want there's quite a few kicking up there at Yellowstone National Park and it looks like it's still continuing uh, this morning all right, moving out and about here across the rest of the states. Um, Texas here, definitely seeing some earthquake activity yesterday and a handful of earthquakes today as well. These oil fields out here really haven't been hit. At least these oil fields have not been hit recently. Down across the Pecos, Texas area, northwestward, yes. But it does look like we're getting some migration of the general pattern of earthquake activity out here in Texas and the oil fields. So seems to be working its way up northeastward uh, where we're seeing the current activity here in these oil fields and there is thousands of them out here and um, that's you know it, it's there's been statistics looking at the relationship between earthquake activity and uh, you know the oil boom so to speak out here uh, when it all started and we've seen an, a huge increase in earthquake activity all across various states wherever uh, they are performing the um, the oil pumping operations and fracking and wastewater disposal uh, disposal facilities. There's a whole um, you know list of things that create earthquakes out here. But I did notice that we're we're getting a little bit of migration here away from our normal region. So we'll keep an eye on uh, some further areas in Texas and Oklahoma as well, where there's quite uh, quite a bit of oil fields located out there. Uh, eastern portion of the country got some earthquake activity here in New Jersey looks like a 1.1 0.8 0.9 from yesterday nothing today 
But, uh, you know, if we look at the total tally, that's definitely getting up there in, uh, in a bunch of uh, earthquakes here. 140 earthquakes. Well, maybe this one out in Pennsylvania. We'll get rid of that. There we go. 139. That's a decent amount of earthquake activity there. Following that 4.8 weeks ago, kind of kicked off this uh, earthquake activity. Uh, and always, you know, there's always that possibility of maybe seeing something larger within the vicinity. But uh, for now, just a couple aftershocks in the area seems like daily is the uh, the occurrence level right now. All right, um, let's see what else we got. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Um, let's go check out Iceland. I know we're getting elevated here in terms of inflation there across the area. And I'm expecting that to kick up here pretty soon. Only got about four earthquakes here on the map. These other ones are going to be um, uh, some type of negative magnitudes. Uh, let's see here. It should already be on here. But um, let's go over here to the Icelandic Met Office. I think I have it here on this computer. Um, there we go. That's a good thing about having links, right, to the computer at home. Uh, as far as your bookmarks go, everything's in sync, so I can go back and look at all my bookmarks, and of course, I got plenty. All right, so this update was put out um, yesterday, or today here, it looks like. Magma accumulation underneath the Savart Singhi area since March 16th approaches 10 million cubic meters out there of magma, so things are inflating like crazy, and we're looking at uh, uh, elevated activity. Look at this, this is the most recent inflation chart here. Here's our previous eruptions and the levels reached in the terms of magma accumulation. Um, our last one here, 317, this is going to be the recent one right here. Prior to that, we had that orange one right here. That kind of reached up a little bit and then we've seen uh, the eruption, but we're almost double that now in the area in terms of the accumulated magma. This is 10 million right here, 10. Here's our previous eruptions back in um, uh, late last year and whatnot. But this one here, where we're at right now, shows that uh, everything is ready to kick back up. Um, it never really died down, right? Let's go to the Live from Iceland site and check this out real quick. Still looks like uh, one remaining active crater. Um, I'm not seeing any lava splashing around there, but uh, um, I believe it's still down there, just not as active. Okay, so this kind of interesting here because we've been seeing this ongoing activity for over a month in terms of the eruption, and we're still getting some major inflation going on there. I just seen a lava uh, splash right here, so that's still active. So with the ongoing out, out, uh, output of magma, along with the inflation going up here, that tells me right here that uh, things are going to get much more active here very soon. Now whether we see that at the current ongoing activity or maybe in a new region, that's something to watch pretty closely. But the general, GP, uh, the general inflation here across the Savart Singhi area is showing you know, that we should be seeing an eruption here soon, even with the ongoing er eruption. So this is unlike um, any of the other eruptions that we've seen. Definitely have to watch this and see how it plays out. There's still obviously some uh, potential of seeing that uh, away from the area in terms of a new eruption. Let me go to the... Uh, Um, here's a four hour Savart Singhi um, inflation chart. Notice that rise right here. This is the inflation up vertical displacement. Getting up there. Definitely getting up there. So we're going to see that uh, really kick up here soon, I think. Um, let's check out these eight hour run times and see where the inflation is the highest out here across the area. Now that's a little small. I can't even read that. So I know you guys can't see that. Let's get that up there in a little bit. And then we're going to check out the Grindavik area and see what's happening down there. That's a little area of concern because um, about 
when was it, a couple weeks ago, we seen a huge earthquake swarm um, to the just to the northwest of Grindavik, but a little bit in town as well, a little bit underneath the town, I should say. And look at this huge inflation going on there across the Grindavik area where this GPS station is. So, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about it or think about it, but, you know, there's always that potential of seeing uh, some further eruption activity within the Grindavik area. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that for sure. Uh, space weather, that site's offline. Kevin's site is offline as well, just FYI. The solarham.net site is down. So we'll check out the spaceweather.com site. There is currently a G1 class storm, potentially tonight and tomorrow. Um, let me go over to the, let's see if this is gonna work. Yep, storm prediction. Uh, what do we got here? Network outage notice. That was uh, rescheduled for May 13th, okay. Um, yeah, I don't even really see a G1 class storm up here. Um, G none. <laughs> we got uh, a little bit of activity maybe kicking up in the KP index, but we're really not expecting much here. Uh, let's see. Um, maybe right here. Let's see if we can spot this. I'll put this into motion. See what we got. This is going to tell us uh, what may be headed our way and why they may be issuing a G1 class storm. The Earth here in the green, the Sun obviously in the yellow. Um, I'm not for sure where they got that from. Maybe just from some solar wind stream up here, it looks like, but I don't see any major CMEs being produced here, at least not on the latest updated image. Otherwise, it would be noted. So it looks like maybe just this uh, very weak area of solar wind stream. So I'm really not expecting much at all uh, for the auroras, even though uh, the spaceweather.com site here shows that it may uh, kick up. Um, let's see what else we got here. Current Aurora Oval. Not a whole lot. Maybe a little bit on the uh, far side of the Earth. Well, at least from us, anyway, here on the North American side. Kind of out there where people are starting to sleep right now, hopefully. Uh, looks like maybe a slight chance up there. But again, I'm really not expecting much from this uh, weak interference there. Uh, storm prediction center out here most of the severe weather has shifted east of my area i'm still currently out here in western kansas i don't plan on chasing this here today i got a few things i got to do but tomorrow's setup is going to be much better uh, i think in terms of uh the uh, severe potential but that means that the folks out here need to be prepared and um you know have a plan in case of some severe weather yesterday's event was pretty much um a lot of cold air got involved with all of the uh, storms popping up, uh, at least here in Kansas. I've seen some tornado damage out there around Shawnee, Oklahoma overnight. Um, so there was some tornadic activity there in Oklahoma uh, with that line of storms that moved through late last night, early in the morning. But uh, yesterday out here in western Kansas, I think there was one little rope tornado out here. Uh, but aside from that, it was pretty much uh, it was uh, just a bunch of a little bit of hail, lots of wind, and a lot of cold air got involved, and that uh, will pretty much cut down the supercell development. So this is for today. Um, tomorrow, day two, a little bit more enhanced risk out here across this area of Oklahoma and Kansas. A huge area of concern for tornado activity across this area. So uh, definitely a uh, you want to be on guard out here tomorrow. It's a weekend, right? Got the weekend, everyone at home. Um, okay, that was that was a little annoying. Not for sure where that came from, but uh, well, obviously I know where it came from, but uh, I didn't know I had the bells on. It shows zero bells. All right, and that looks like it's just a little earthquake there into the Puerto Rico area, two point eight. So yeah, uh, you know, talking about tomorrow, definitely got to uh, keep an eye on the uh, weather out here.
I have a weather radio on. We'll cover this a little bit later on uh, this evening once we get a little bit better look at the uh, weather models. Uh, I'm probably going to be out here uh, around the Oklahoma, uh, Kansas border area watching the severe weather tomorrow. Uh, but today I got a few things to check out here in Kansas and then we'll go from there. But aside from the tornado threat, we got wind and hail threats out there as well. So it's going to be a dandy of a setup. All right, uh, what else we got here, folks? I think that's about it. I'm going to jump off here and get about my day. I hope everyone enjoys their Friday. Again, we are out here on location across various states, just kind of doing some uh, well, geology studies, um, some sightseeing, some volcanic studies, storm uh, viewing, and whatnot. So we'll try to provide updates um, when we can here for the earthquakes and uh, maybe even a video or two while we're out and about uh, looking at some things so make sure you guys subscribe while you're here welcome to the new subscribers and um, we'll be back home eventually but right now it's just a, a good time to be uh, out and about observing uh, the things going on here so we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening unless uh, unless I decide to go live here out in Kansas and uh, we'll see you guys then take care have a good day